I want to dovetail your economic and investment efforts with the political challenges that Mr. El Sisi and General El Sisi and uh, Egypt have off of the 2011 revolution. Is it a distraction to you to see the president's debate with parliament about extending his tenure out substantially? Thank you very much, Tom. It's uh, lovely to be here with you early morning here in New York uh, on your program. Um, in fact, as you've uh, rightly indicated, we're moving forward with uh, comprehensive uh, institutional and legal reform to improve the business environment. And in fact, President Sisi has put a grand vision for Egypt where investment would be driven by the private sector. So we've moved with all the required uh, reforms uh, to ensure that. And this is reflected in, in the indicators because that's how I assess where Egypt is today. So I look at where the rating agencies have, uh, have uh, continuously improved right. its rating for Egypt. <clears throat> International fin financial so institutions have also reflected that. Is your economic efforts and your international cooperation efforts, are they amended or changed given the politics that Mr. El Sisi has in, in Egypt? In fact, the politics in the country has helped a lot uh, improve the business environment and has uh, opened the ground mm -hmm. for, for uh, more business to come to Egypt. And that's in fact, in the numbers that we see, both in FGI numbers and also overall private investment. So despite, because you know, when you look at the prospects in mm -hmm. the economy in Egypt, you look at the international, you have to put in the international context. Mm -hmm. So I've just come from Washington in the spring meetings, the World Bank and IMF spring meetings. And in Washington there, the talk is more about the slowdown in the global economy and the international prospects. And despite this, and despite the crunch in the emerging markets, Egypt's share of FDI continues to rise at, right now mm -hmm. at 4%. Yep. And Egypt ranks one of the top performing countries right. in the region based on the outlooks by both the fund and the bank. Minister, let me bring in my colleague in London, Guy Johnson. Guy? Minister, why is FDI, though, not going uh, at a higher rate? If, is, is, if, as you say, the investment opportunity in Egypt is as good as you think it is, FDI should be significantly higher than where, it, than where it has been. That is not taking place. What do you need to do to get that FDI sto story moving in the right direction? Guy, I think it's very important as an economist that we, when we look at FDI in Egypt, we put it into the international context. So we have to watch what is happening globally. And I've just, I've just mentioned to Tom that uh, in the spring meetings, the main outlook globally, there has been a slowdown in FGI and there is an <coughs> overall slowdown in the international economy and the crunch in the emerging markets. Nevertheless, Egypt's share of FGI globally has been increasing mm -hmm. today at 4% and that's what how we look at it. Mm -hmm. And today uh, we're having the investment impact at the UN where all had the states are uh, giving their statements regarding impact investment, and that's what we're monitoring. We're monitoring not just the FDI in an absolute sense, but what kind of FDI are we really attracting? We're attracting FDI that is going to create jobs. We're attracting FDI that is going to be of value added to the economy, with, that will bring in uh, management, technology, and that will be export-oriented, will be able to generate yep. a foreign currency, and that's the impact investment we're really, the quality investment that we're aiming for. OK, let's talk about private investment in Egypt. Uh, interest rates are just shy, the deposit rate, just shy of 16% in Egypt. Is that number too high and is it discouraging private investment in your country? We, we obviously, there is a correlation, but let's see where, what the number tells us because um, that's that uh, the real sector, the real sector gives you, uh, gives you a lot of optimism and a positive outlook because private investment has been picking up at 26 percent because we don't only look at FDI but we look at the total which right. includes also the domestic investment and also the number of companies uh, that has been established every day this has been increasing at 27 percent which also gives me a lot of optimism well, or where the investment goes in Egypt. Let me bring in Dr. Bremer. Ian Bremer with us, the Eurasia Group folks. Ian, with a question for Dr. Nasser. Well, your region's been making a lot of news recently, and not Egypt, right? It's most Libya, it's Algeria, it's Sudan, all of which are sort of countries falling apart because you have significant domestic instability. Do you feel like you've dodged that bullet given the Arab Spring and
and CC taking over um, from what had been a much greater period of domestic instability? Or do you think that there still is a significant level of mass discontent even in your country in terms of the working class and the middle class? In fact, it is very important to highlight that, that President Sisi has put a ground vision for Egypt in terms of moving forward with a very bold and courageous economic reform program that has been packaged by con conditional cash transfer and a lot of social safety nets. We look at all the different laws that, and amendments that took place. We have a new investment law that puts all the guarantees and assurances to the private sector. It provides incentives, tax and non-tax incentives, to, to reposition Egypt on the investment global map. We've, we've, we've also led major reforms in terms of like sectoral reforms on the gas laws, on the energy, renewable energy laws. So you have the transportation laws, all these new laws that did bring in the mm -hmm. private sector in a big time. And you see that in the number of big companies that are currently expanding or establishing. You, you mentioned the issue of grievances and peoples. We, we consider that the Egyptian people are, are part of the reform program and they are very supportive of the mm -hmm. reform program because it has done, been done through extensive consultation by the public and the people in different well. governorates and the parliament mm -hmm. has been very much engaged in that. So there is a lot of, uh, of right. appreciation because there has been very, a very transparent system no. of acknowledging challenges, but also <clears throat> the way putting forward the way forward in a very consultative no. manner.